Golds. You said Wait, it was. Uh, you, had, you had a friend named Eddie alive. growing up that sold you kids cigarettes for a buck ten. Is that what he, you're saying? He, Eddie drove the ice cream truck and he sold cigarettes out of the ice cream truck and he would sell them to anybody who could stand up to the counter and ask for a pack of cigarettes. I used to buy cigarettes for uh, my what? friend's parents. Yeah, awesome. I mean, it, I don't think it was illegal to sell them to kids under 18 at its no. at one point. I used to smoke and airplanes. welcome to our lot. Like, we had a nice pitch for underage tobacco use, which is not condoned by the Walk Plus headquarters. No, you should not. It's the Don't original know. sin. No. No. Why not? Either. We got a we got a shorter show than usual. It seems how uh I guess something's happening in the barn at 750. An announcement of some kind. Like I think Trey is making some kind of announcement, which who knows what it is. It might just be a, a plea for money for some charity, or it could be Hey, we're playing New Year's Eve. No, I, I think I think they're launching uh, a line of beauty products that will be made from goat's milk and chicken stuff uh, on the barn, on the farm that the barn is on. That's a solid guess. I think that is as close as anybody has come to being accurate right there. Yes. Llama, do you have yeah. a guess? Are I'm gonna really guess lying? that he's gonna he's gonna have Les Claypool out there, and they're gonna announce a second Oysterhead album. Oysterhead for New Year's, and then they're gonna they're gonna release it on Halloween, and it'll be some weird Trey Les Claypool like themed, like album. Yeah, I mean, the last time he did this, they did release an album. Like Sigma Oasis came out exactly like this, where it's like, oh, hey, by the way, tune in a little early. We're gonna tell you a secret. Yeah, and then when they did the when they did the tab one, it didn't work out that well. Oh, come on, man. The tab when you mean his solo album? No, the the latest live album. Oh, I'm hoping because they did it on Twitter, but it was like right around the time of the wildfires. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm I'm hoping for a taste album, the Trey Anastasio Chamber Ensemble. Really? Yeah. So I thought it was so cool with just the strings and him singing with no guitar. He looked so awkward without a guitar, but singing. But it was so cool to see him do. Oh, that. you mean the Rescue Squad string? Uh, yes, the Rescue Squad strings. That would be the Trey Anastasio Chamber Ensemble. Okay. Well, our our first guest has swung by. So uh, you guys know him. No, he said, dude. let me in. Ah, hello. Let me in. Hello. Let hello. Me You're about as impatient as Kevin. Oh, this shit. This isn't my strong suit. Let me in. <laughs> How's everybody back. doing? Welcome back to America. Yeah. America. He I, lives back I'm, not associate, I'm not associated with your country. But you're here, right? <laughs> I'm in Canada. He's in, he lives oh, in you're Canada. back in Canada. Yeah, it, it, well, I'm back in the city. Yes, I have emerged from the woods. Oh, I got you. I Didn't you see all that good swag he got? He got a fucking piles of swag when he got here. I did. It was good. My my parents kept texting me while I was up there. They're like, what are all these packages you're getting? What are you did up you... to, kid? <laughs> all right. I'm just going to not interrupt Kevin anymore. But I was trying to ask you, did you come down here for a second? Did I misunderstand that? No, I did not. Oh, you've been in Canada this whole time. Yeah. Just in the woods in Canada and then in the city. Yeah, I've, I've tweeted a couple of times that hypothetically I would like to come to the U.S. to see like a goose drive-in show, but it's not worth it for the two weeks of quarantine. Why did you lie to me, Ryan? I thought very you were sorry. here. I'm very sorry. No, that's no, okay. You're cool. So are you in the basement or your bedroom? Um, I am at my apartment at university, actually. Oh, okay. At university. Nice university. <laughs> yes. Is it is the University of Manitoba? It's the University of Guelph, actually. It's about an hour west of Toronto. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, what's you your what's I've your major? My nice fish poster in the background. Uh accounting. You know what you know what accounting Mr. Palmer have to be good with, right? Stats, right? Yep. You're gonna be Mr. Palmer from here on out. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Well, oh boy. Well, as long as I don't get hanged by the ACDC right. bag. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think uh, is going to be the big announcement? I know what okay. you think because you've so, been tweeting. 
yeah, obviously you've seen my feet, but I, I'm thinking they're going to announce something for next Friday for Halloween. Um, I think it's too early for a New Year's uh, announcement, um, especially because this doesn't require any hotels or anything like that. I forget who brought up that point on Twitter. That was a very good point. But, but how about this one, Ryan? They, <laughs> uh, they're going to be vying for lots of other people's dollars one New Year's and other bands doing stuff. So maybe they're announcing it now to get okay. some of those dollars. Realistically, if they announce on December 31st at 2 p.m. that they're doing a New Year's stream, are you watching anyone else? I'll probably be asleep because I did stay up that late. But <laughs> no, well, I wouldn't be. I, I Realistically, most of us, if they announced on that day that they were doing a stream from the barn for New Year's, we would all watch. But I, I, I'm, I'm betting the New Year's announcement comes at the um, beginning of December. Now, I could be wrong, but that's just my guess. I think there's only one way to settle who's right on this. Mm. <laughs> Stump the Boomer? We play Stump the Boomer. All right, wait, I need to get a piece of paper. Stump the Boomer! God, hang on. It's time for Stomp the Boomer. Worst voiceover I've ever done. Wait, Worst if I can figure out no, where my right. pencil case is. Oh, there. That's so great. Your pencil case. That's great. All right. Mr. I'm Palmer ready. would have a pencil case. <laughs> okay, I got my pen. I got my paper. I got my drink. I'm ready. All right. Just a second. Let me get uh, the questions. Chad also, just dipping. in case you guys forgot, I can legally drink here. In Canada? Yes. Yeah, Very 18. nice. 19. Oh, 19. In Canada, if, if, you can go die for your country, if you can go die for your country in Canada, you can drink. Unlike yeah. America, where you can die for your country for three years but not have a beer. Speaking of Stump the Boomer, sense. that's an argument that's been made in this country since we ratified a certain amendment. Oh, my God. Back when the Boomers were babies... When we lowered the voting age to 18, which was like five decades ago. All right. Are we ready for the questions? I'm we ready. All I'm right. ready. Let's do it. Okay. Um, two songs have been played six times during the 10 costume sets. That's all these questions are about the costume sets. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. All right. Only two songs have been played six times. That's the most that any song has been played. At a Halloween show? At those 10 Halloween shows, yeah. Got it. All right, name one of the two songs. Oh, I, a bonus dang. point if you can name two of them. Buzzer. Well, just, just write it on paper. Oh. Didn't you have paper? Yes. <laughs> I have two guesses. All right. Um, my, All right. What, what do you got there, Kev? Okay, that's wrong. Uh, that that would have been an obvious guess. These are my two guesses. Chalk dust and tweezer. Okay, you guys are both wrong. Okay, really? I got one other one. Okay. Hood? Hood. No. no. Wow. Ghost or antelope? Oh, huh. interesting. Interesting. All right. Interesting. All right. That's all right. We've both been stumped so far. Yes. But technically I'm winning because the boomer was stumped. <laughs> <laughs> technically. Half a point for a technicality. <laughs> all right. The chilling thrilling costume set two of the songs timber and shipwreck have only been played one other time outside of that set what show were either of those ones played at Ding. All right. All right. I, 
I knew they did timber, timber, timber. I couldn't tell you when, and I'd say Mexico for shipwreck. Or Mexico win Mexico, I guess. I have no idea. I, he knows. He, he, he got them both. <laughs> yeah, he got them both. And I knew. I know oh. it's the the Syracuse show from summer 2016 was the timber, timber, yeah. timber. Fun fact: that was also the show where Paige had guitar difficulties and they couldn't play Frankenstein in the first set. And then he played it on organ in the second set or encore, I believe, when the guitar still wasn't working. Right. I was at that show. That that that's another fun fact. <laughs> but let's move on to uh, question three. Do I get a half a point for Mexico? Yes, you get a half a point for Mexico. The score is two point five, two point five. Wait, right. when did he get two points? You did. No, you did. You, you said 2. 2. 5, 2. 5. 2. 2. 5. 2.5, 2.5. 2.52. Oh, 2.5-0.5. Oh, oh. Got it. That makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, next, time, next time, I'll, I'll, I'll convert to metric for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we measure. We measure. Uh, we don't use points is, here. We just use This beavers. is multiple choice. All right. All right. What is the number of total unique songs played in all 10 Halloween costume set shows? A, 234, B, 240, or C, 248? One I can't, I, uh, I don't have any knowledge of. You go first. But that is correct. C. That is C for correct. Oh, I said B. Oh, it is now 1.5 dash 2.5. There we go. All right. Two shows had an encore by a different song by the same band that they had covered. Name both of those shows. Whoa. Oh, this okay. And the encore songs. Oh. Yeah, I'm just guessing here now. Uh, Bonus points if you can name the key I'm playing in right now, Ryan. I believe I that is Q flat. Jazz flat. That would be Q flat. Okay, I got. I know I got X. one of them. My All generation, right. okay, in '95, and then my other one I think was Little Feet in '14, but I don't know the song. Little Feet was 2010. Okay, yeah. 2010. Wow. Oh, I no, guess I guess oh not '94, and I have no idea what song. No, it was it was my generation with there the Who, go. and then it was Space Oddity. Oh Bowie. yeah, of course. So I, I get thought the point. Bowie was going to be the easy one. Yeah. So, so I get I, half I a was point? at the debut you get a half space point. oddly. I oh. 2.5 dash 2.0. All right. For fam, 2.0 for fam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I I'm I'll take my half a point lead. here. <laughs> All right, we got two more questions. Two more. Yes. What was the instrument change on Frankenstein from 1.0 to 3.0? Oh, oh, that's easy. The instrument change? Yeah, instrument change. I think we already talked about this, didn't we? I mentioned it, but that wasn't planned. That wasn't planned. So organ. To, All right. What do you got, Kev? Organ to guitar. All right. What do you got there? Uh, Wait, I'm not Ryan? done. I'm not done writing. I'm giving the long answer. Oh, Hammond organ. I don't know if that's going. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. As long as the last word of that is guitar. It is. <laughs> he All um right. he actually yeah. he used the synth and the organ in 1.0, not just the organ. Right. The main thing was that he added a guitar. Yes, he got James Brown's key. All right, so this one's for all the marbles. Oh. All right. 
the Little Feet show. So this is back in the year that they covered Little Feet. Had a big bust out in set one. What was that song? Oh, come on, man. Really? I, how am I not playing right now? He's Googling it. That's cheating. I'm not good. Hands free, baby. Not you. <laughs> It was it a little feet. It wasn't a little feet song. It, it wasn't a little feet song. It was at that. It was it's. It was Fine, at I'm that sure. show that they busted yeah. the song out. They busted this song out. What song was it? Well, I don't when you're think waiting, I no, know. that's a little feet song. That's Alan oh, Tucson. Come on, Ryan. Come I, on. I don't know this. You don't know. What about you, Kev? I have no idea. I just googled it. Chad. It's spooky. Spooky. Chad, Chad what knew what it. What are you gonna say? Do you have another question? We need a tiebreaker. Look, or you guys winning? don't know this, but what the, the, the song they busted out was. Ha ha. Very funny. Good one. Well, I'm going to tell them. I don't know. It, <laughs> it was spooky. Okay. It was oh, spooky. okay. Yeah, it. It, it was spooky. So, uh, I guess I get all the marbles because you guys didn't. So, yeah. you know, Basically, sorry. who who won? Out, were we tied? No, you, you won by a half you, a point. You won by a half a point. I'll take it. Hey, uh, <laughs> congratulations. So, so you know where Government Mule got their name from? You don't no. get that. It was Alan Alan Woody, their bass player, made a joke about James Brown's wife's ass being like a government mule. And that's how they ended up naming the band. It was after James, because James Brown made me think of it in the guitar. Interesting tidbit. Yes. She got an ass like a government mule. Um, Quick shout out to the Fish Discord squad in the chat. Oh, nice. Hey, uh, don't you have a podcast coming up there, Ryan? You want to well, tell us Well, I'm about glad that? you asked. Indeed, I do. Um, hold, hold on, well, hold on, hold on. Before you get to that, Ryan. Yes. There's a Fish Discord. There is. What's that like? It's amazing. And you should join really? it. Really? It's a great time. My whole it's not like you sent us invitations or anything. I've I've no. tweeted about it and linked it many times. Oh, really? I will I'll I'll drop the link right now. No, All I don't right. want I don't want it. Oh, ouch. I do. No, my whole experience with Discord has been really bad. Oh no, this Discord's amazing. And also, actually, I wanted to speaking of the fish Discord, we're running a fish bingo we call it fingo um uh for the upcoming beacon jams show um shows all you have to do is fill out a bingo card of songs you think trey will play um and you win bragging rights do we have a do we get a uh template or do i yes yeah yeah yeah. you got a template i'm going to link in uh the youtube chat here for anybody who would like to play um, that is to the channel that will give you everything you need to know about Fingo and to play picks or do before the show starts tonight. Oh, I'm doing it before the show. Yeah. Can you, can you it, name it something in. else besides Fingo? Well, that's what we came up with. We started doing it last fall uh, for the fall tour. Okay. I'm, I'm currently I'm currently a two time champion. I won the MSG and of Mexico course. bingo. Of course. Hey. hey. I'm starting a new group called the Fish Degenerates. <laughs> and uh that's where me and chad will be hanging out <laughs> um now, I'm anyway watching, i'm watching the world series tonight i don't know what you guys are doing. so <laughs> um you got, you got back, to, to, back to my back podcast to yeah back to your podcast let's, back let's, to your let's podcast rate this shit to here. Let's, let's get back on track here um uh, so my podcast Dodgers. um it's called um we move through stormy weather mm-hmm. um that's you know, my last name's Storm. So, um, but basically on the podcast is going to be me and a rotating cast of guests. Um, each episode, we're going to pick a different fish song. Um, and we're going to look at um, each of us is going to pick a specific version of this song. Um, and we're going to talk about why we like that specific version, try to convince the other person possibly that our version is better. Um, and look at the evolution of the jamming st- the jams that come out of said song throughout the band's career um, and also touch on a few other key versions. Um, so I'll give you a little hint at what the topic of the first episode is going to be, not 
the guest yet because I'm keeping that under wraps for now. But the first episode is about chalk dust torture. Um, and uh, we're looking at primarily the Baker's Dozen and Camden 99. You yeah, picked very... the Baker's Dozen. Yes, I picked the Baker's Dozen. That's my favorite fish jam of all time. Okay. Which one? Baker's Dozen Chalk Dust. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> mm-hmm. What's it's your favorite jam of all time there? Uh, your Chalk Dust. What's your favorite Chalk Dust jam of all time, Kevin? My favorite chalk dust jam of all time. Um, yeah, man. I it's not one of my favorites. You don't like chalk dust? I, I mean, it's okay, but I'm old. I, I don't need to hear about chalk. I used to have to hit out the erasers because I would get in trouble in fourth oh, grade. Come on! Whoa, whoa! This that's is, a that's a that's a I really I, right the, the one wow. that sticks out in my head and has always stuck out is the Clifford Ball, just because it was a moment. It's a, it's, it's, I mean, in terms of jamming, that's not the most improvisational well, one. Guys, we have another guest popping in. Ooh. Oh, no. Ooh. He's, uh, David Strainay. Oh, I know this guy. Yeah. Ryan, this thing only says three names. Yours, Itchy, and Norm Henge. Yeah, I haven't updated the score sheet yet. I have to do that. Where's the uh, blank card for me to fill out? So you see how there's a sheet labeled template? Uh, oh, okay. Oh, my God. Make a, like... make a copy of that and just rename it to your name. Okay. And then fill it out. Most fascinating live YouTube ever. Woo. Instruction. <laughs> I never got an answer from Ryan. I never got an answer from Ryan. Who you got, Dodgers or Rays? Come on. I have no idea. Just pick one, man. I don't. I don't follow sports in the slightest. Just flip fucking coin and say Dodgers or Rays. Let, let me okay, help Dodgers. you, Ryan. Yeah, let me help you. Say Dodgers. Okay, Dodgers. All right, good choice. There's only sixteen song get... titles I'm picking. Um, correct. It's a four by four bingo card. Oh, there we go. Hey, what's up, man? Hey. Oh, hello. 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 Oh, hello. There we go. We see you now. I was asked to start my video, so I did. Yeah, nobody knew that, that, that you were here without it. <laughs> What's but going on, guys? Not much. Not much. How, how are you doing? Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Hey, not not a problem, man. Glad you could make it. Can Cheers. I ask Ryan? Oh, yeah, question? I saw your koozie, so solidarity. Nice. Can I ask Ryan a question? Are we doing diagonal? Um, yes, any combination of four in a row. Corners are n- not part of this game. We're having hey, a, hey a David, are you playing bingo? Are you playing bingo? Fish I'm bingo? The Discord thing that you were just talking about? Yeah. yeah. I'm not on the Discord. Um, can you send me that link? Yes, I'm, you- I'll, pu- I'll put the direct link to the bingo doc in the YouTube chat. There it will you let you. YouTube. Oh, okay. I just did. Did you? In the YouTube chat, well, you just have to I'm copy not. paste that into your browser, and then you're good. There we go. Are you guys all playing bingo now? I'm going to play. Because um, I got to beat Ryan at something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do you have any thoughts, David, on what they're going to announce from the barn? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Um, first of all, I think it's going to be interesting to see how Trey is going to make it from burlington to new york city in 10 minutes or five, or five minutes probably well, uh, um but um no i i don't know that's um, a hell of an announcement presumably <laughs> does it yeah presumably uh it's gonna be something that they taped when trey went up there for the three days yeah back in, what was that august um but i don't know they could, it have, could be anything. They could have recorded something while they were there. It could be um, like like a new sick at disc type instrumental album. I don't know. It's probably not going to be anything that significant. It could be a concept album featuring Rescue Squad, Ass Handed. <laughs> All the recent classics. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like that idea. I would listen to that. Um 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I doubt very highly that it's going to be any sort of show announcement. I'm pretty sure that they're probably, I mean, let me dream. Tra traded that uh, Rolling Stone interview. He was very adamantly against the idea of having a show without an audience. But he did mention in one of the Beacon Jam something related that his attitude had changed. And that's why the Beacon Jams are a thing. Mm -hmm. um, because I think, again, in think of in May or June or whenever it was how different we were all feeling towards this thing. And we thought it could be over soon. Yeah. I mean, I hope that that is true. I hope that that's the case. I mean, it'd be weird as fuck to go to a socially distanced, like drive in fish show. I don't, I, here's the other thing is that I don't see how that's logistically possible. Like I oh, think there's no way fish is fish. Can't do a drive in. Well, hold on, yeah. hold on before, before like, like, you knock the those kind of driving things. I was talking with Chad last night, and just his neighborhood alone, like all together rooting for the Dodgers, but everybody in their own house still feels like that community group idea. Like I think we're accepting those different dynamics. So. Oh, for oh, sure. For sure. Yeah. I, I, I want to call it just a shitty drive in. <laughs> I think um I've been a part of various Twitch comedy communities uh, during most of this. And it's, and just like, and obviously the beacon the last two weeks I've watched and I've been part of that. And it's like, it's really cool to be able to be a part of a community like that. And, and I've noticed that like over time, like in these comedy shows that I, I, I watch, I've been able to participate and, and it has formed somewhat of a community. So you, I'm sorry, can you give us some examples? Um, there's been a bunch of stuff on Planet Scum, which is uh, Chris Gethard's channel that yeah. he started on Twitch. Um, mm -hmm. I've been watching a lot of that stuff, like the George Lucas talk show. And oh, Connor, and, my boy Connor, man. Yeah, oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> He's the best. It's, yeah, it's Connor's been, really Connor's a really good dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've 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 learned improv from him. Oh, for real. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm part of that whole cult. Um, UCB New York. Yep. How you dealing yeah. with that place? Uh, being down, being done. Uh, I'm I mean, it, it was, it was rough. It was rough yeah. when it first when it first went away. <clears throat> um, I've been doing improv online though. <laughs> Zoom prov, it's a thing. I've been. I'm so curious about that. I, I was so excited when I heard you were coming on because I'm like, I'm so like curious about that dynamic like you don't have the heartbeat of the person across the scene from you you know what i'm saying I, yeah it's yeah. very different um and it's taken some getting used to for sure um it's almost become its own art form in a way um but it is scratching that itch um and you know just getting reps in and just keeping it fresh in your mind is do they feel it? Do they feel like reps though? Um, yes, they do. Yeah, I get uh, it. And I've been doing it consistently enough, uh, whether it be like random jams or I have a, a, a indie team called Soul Patch, and we've been doing some practices. But I've also been taking uh, weekly classes with Will Hines, like for pretty much the entirety of of quarantine. I'm sure you're learning some good stuff there. Oh yeah, hell yeah. How many people are typically in the room? Mm, like eight okay that so, feels yeah. that feels good yeah and everybody gets enough stage time and uh yeah i mean it doesn't feel as good as tucking your shirt in you know? <laughs> nothing does <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, no, uh, the, the Twitch communities, though, uh, have been really, really good. It's, it's kind of made all the difference uh, in a lot of ways, like just being able to be a part of something like that. And I think that like the fish community could embrace that. I mean, obviously we are. But the, the thing is, the chat for those beacon shows goes a mile a minute. I mean, it's just insane how fast it goes. Oh, I haven't paid attention to the chat he, at all. He because has, one of his kids good. is listed with two other people as dealing with that, and I think what they do is capture shit. Oh, this I, one looks good, and then they send it to him. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to make that match. There's no way you, anybody could read it. Oh, I mean, for sure. 
Yeah, there's, yeah. there's no way. There's no way. Uh, it, scrolling so fast, there's no way Trey would have time to read a message. My idea was to form a Wook Plus Twitch account, and then we all could donate. The Wook Plus guys could donate like three or four hundred dollars, and then get him whoa, to do whoa, a request. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, come on, basically man. buy a song well th- you have to think of it as a marketing budget see all, yeah, what so all I'm these people here trey say walk plus so, oh walk plus oh, that's funny <laughs> so what i'm hoping for out of the beacon jams or twitch chat or anything i'm gonna say it here so everyone can get the word out november 13th which is friday is my birthday mm. Woo! and my goal is to get trey to wish me a happy birthday on stream Nice. All right. That's All the right. goal. Well, you know what? We can get, get a campaign going. Get the word out. November 13th. Get Trey to ri- uh, to wish me happy birthday. One, two, you're the one who's all tight with Fishnet. Why don't you get one of your boys over there to hook you up? Yeah, why don't you just call Trey, Ryan? I, oh, <laughs> trust me. If I had Trey's number, he would have blocked me by now. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Well, you got to do the same for me because my birthday is November 30th. So on the, the last one, the 27th. Then All right. Well, there we go. That's what that's what needs to happen. <laughs> I just had to do the 30 days in September, April, June, November <laughs> to find Wait. out if you weren't lying or not. You know the lying. finger thing? Or we have oh, to. No, um, I, know. I know the yeah. finger thing. Yeah. Better yet, not only wish him happy birthday, we're more than two weeks out. So we should tell Trey to get fish for the 13th. I'm sorry, we're more than two weeks what? We're more two, than two we're, weeks out from it, so they can quarantine. That's Canada. He's yes, from Canada. I'm Canadian. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So, All right, I got a question for you. February has 28 days, right? Four How many months on have... Some, on some, uh, every four years? Right, well, generally, February has 28 days. How many months have 28 days? All of them. Come on. Damn it. Seriously, that's like fourth grader shit. Come on, Kevin. You were, you'd be amazed how many people get tripped up. Remember we were talking about t-shirts? You had the shirt that said, fuck you, I'm from Wisconsin or whatever. And you used it in bars to like start conversations. No, it never said, <laughs> fuck you, I'm from Wisconsin. It said, Chad from Wisconsin. It didn't say, <laughs> fuck you. It said my, my name. Like, I was like trying to be polite and introduce myself working on a cruise ship, being like, hey... You're a new group of passengers coming on. I could say Chad from Wisconsin and let you know who I am and where I'm from. And why did you think, how did you misunderstand that that was fuck you from Wisconsin? How did you misunderstand that? Llama, help me here. How did you misunderstand (laughs) that? Maybe I was only half listening in the meeting yesterday when we were talking about it. Nice. Well, Llama can't get... Llama, stop touching your face. You're going to get COVID, first of all. I'm blaming Second Kevin. of all, we just lost Dan. Oh, I'm still here. Okay. Let's get him he's got to get, he's gotta get more alcohol to be able to deal with Kevin. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, so so my, big call, my big call tonight is 1977. That's contingent on getting Nat Cressman, though. Really? Well, doesn't she sing it? Well, I guess. Uh, that's yeah. the that's the Spanish one, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's Nat Crespin. So I don't know if she's in New York. She was recently playing a show in Colorado, I think, but I don't know. Yeah, and Jen Hartswick was playing a show in Colorado last week, I think. So I don't believe that. All right. So I'm. I, I think that. also Casey is in Oysterhead. Uh, no, Jake Silko posted a photo from the Beacon earlier and it looks like it's still uh tab like still russ tony and ray and cyro um Who posted that uh jake silko the photographer isn't it zero okay. might be zero probably unless you're from canada i don't see why not i think zero is probably the person who lives the closest to new york city out of i mean other than trey of course sounds right i just yeah, feel like thought- more musicians live in new york city though yeah. Someone hey. the roots, that'd be cool. Oh yeah. man, I just that I never needed you like this before from August is mm-hmm. so good. It was great. I would love to see the roots at the beacon. Yeah. I've really been digging these beacon shows a lot. Like yeah. the strings last week were I'm really hoping I'm really hoping for a Julius. 
That'd be awesome. Because is that on your card? I, I'm pretty sure I put it on my card. Let me see. Hmm. I definitely put it on my bingo card. Yeah, it's on my bingo card. Um, um, thanks, but so I think I, I think uh, I want Julius because if you listen to the Julius, any Julius from the Tab Trio Spring Tour from 2018, the Russ Tony pocket is unbelievable. Tony playing that bass line is like butter. Mm. And I want to hear Ray on that as well. So I, I'm fingers crossed. I don't think I got to see them play that. I went to the Trey Trio show with Ray at uh, Central Park. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, didn't, right. they didn't play. They didn't play Julius. No, and then I'm hoping he breaks it out with Tab with horns at some point because Julius with horns is awesome. He's gonna have to get James Casey to come back from Hawaii, which I, I know he said on Twitter he is not doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but mm. um, yeah. I think there's going to be lots of surprises. He's going to continue surprising us. Do you For guys sure. think that he's going to con- like continue the no repeating songs? For sure. Yeah. No. I, yeah, I don't know about that necessarily, but like I think like the I think always be different. Yeah, I I think for sure this week there's not going to be like I don't see repeats until at least week 6. Well, he said last week that they they were rehearsing or they were inside of the Beacon Theater for hours before the broadcast practicing. So that means that the band is probably learning some fish shit and yeah, you know, there's still a lot of tab shit they haven't played and, and I don't think learning the lonely any, trip songs. Yeah, they haven't played any Ghosts of the Forest. I don't think. Which, which possibility? Really, Chad, I'm what, the forest, what, I, I what do you got? Uh, okay. Here's the bet. Do we get Gaiuti tonight? Yes or no? With Tansky? With, um, oh. two two piece with uh, piano and guitar. Oh, I I could oh, see yeah, Gaiuti. So- yeah, yeah. Or, or I don't think he does Gaiuti with Tab, but I could see a Trey Tansky uh, Gaiuti duet. Or strings, he does Gaiuti with um, orchestra. Dude, that divided sky last week. Oh. Blew so me away. So good. So good. I, I got so, good. so so divided sky or the stash from the week before? Mm-hmm. Which one oh, was better? Oh, divided sky for sure. Divided sky for sure. Divided sky. I like Unreal. I mean, I'm biased because divided sky is my favorite fish song of all time. So, oh, so I good. very thoroughly enjoyed that. Oh. Well, David, standard question. You get a flex one time, first time on the lot. Oh yeah. What? Oh, yeah. What's what's your fit? What's what's your show total? What's, oh, what's yeah, my, show. oh, okay. Um, one fourteen. Whoa! There That's you a big go. Flex. Um, yeah. and my my first show ever was nine ten ninety nine at the Gorge, followed by nine eleven ninety nine the second night. Uh, yeah, they played. Um, got it. It was debut of Gotta Jabu at my first show. Debut of Sand oh, nice. and Heavy Things on my second show. Wow. Good shit. Um, so, yeah. And then I, I did all of Summer and Fall 2000 tour. Like, I oh, stung nice. at the gorge. I, I, I'm from the Pacific Northwest originally. I've lived in New York for seven years. Um, so, okay. the gorge was like our venue. And I've seen every fish show at the gorge since 99. That's oh. awesome. Where are you going to go see them this year, too? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So bummed that I was not able to do that. Yeah. Or, we all someday. Yeah. Someday. Yeah, I mean, is it cheaper to live in Seattle or New York City? Uh, well, you used to be able to say Seattle hands down, but nowadays it's like about the same. It's mm-hmm. kind of crazy how expensive Seattle has gotten. And not yeah. just Seattle, like, you know, Portland. And even like, you know, Olympia, Bellingham, like all uh, Eugene, like all those Northwest cities have gotten more expensive. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of it is because of the, like the tech boom in, especially in Seattle and like yeah. Amazon. Also the Seattle Seahawks, they, they had a big part in that too. <laughs> when they won the Super Bowl. No, they didn't. The Seattle Seahawks <laughs> did not drive real estate prices up. I'm I sorry. don't know that for sure. I think it, I kind of no, did. Um, oh, also the show Portlandia. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would yes. Had nothing to do with the real estate prices in Seattle. Come on. That's true. But I yeah, I don't know. I think that there's some basis to that, but you're you're probably mm. right. I'm probably bullshit. No, I wasn't even uh, in Seattle when that happened. I, I, I want to say it's because everybody wants to see a Death Cab for Cutie home show. That's <laughs> Actually, that answer makes more sense than any of these. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, the Gorge, that's my venue. It's my favorite place to see fish. I've also seen a million other shows there. I've seen so many good shows at the Gorge. Did you get to Red Rocks in yes. 2009? Not for fish. I've never seen oh. fish at, at Red Rocks, but I, I saw... I went to Reggae on the Rocks in 2000. So yeah, when I went on to uh, 2000 Fish Summer and Fall Tour, I also, before Fall Tour, went to Reggae on the Rocks uh, and various other shows. Um, but in 2004, I went to Bonnaroo. <laughs> I took a Greyhound bus to Bonnaroo from Seattle. Um, and then... And that was fucking great. And then when I was I was hitchhiking, I was trying to hitchhike my way back, and there was a guy pulling out of the lot at Bonnaroo, and I just had a sign that said Seattle, I think. And he was like, "Hey man, I'm going to Olympia. You want to ride?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah, I do." And then he was like, "Okay, there's one catch. On the way, we have to go to Red Rocks and see the Dead play." I'm like, "Oh God." So horrible. I guess I'll stop on the way. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Sorry, yeah, it's it's dare pretty you. cool. When the, when the dead in 89 at Alpine, I hitchhiked out there and had no ride home after the third show. I'm standing by the exit. This car stops and it's this girl I know. And she's like, do you need a ride? I'm like, yeah. Drove right me back. all the way back to the front door of my fucking house right. in Wisconsin to Baltimore. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, that also happened to me after Shoreline um, 2000, the last show of 1.0. I met some kids from Missoula, Montana, and they gave me a ride all the way back up. Good good place, Missoula, Montana. Sure. I've been there once. No, I've been there yeah. once. I, I actually love Missoula. Um, yeah, I was going to I was gonna say something. I was going to say every time I've, I've ever brought up um, seeing a show at the Gorge, East coasters always go like, well, have you ever been to Red Rocks? Because that's as far west as they get. I mm-hmm. lived in Colorado, thank you. Well, great, but you never made it to the Gorge. My dad they went didn't to the play gorge the Gorge when I lived there. I don't even know if the Gorge existed when I lived there in 93 and 94. Well, the, <laughs> I mean, it's... The, a- gorge, the <laughs> gorge, to be fair, the Gorge has existed since prehistoric times. It's a gorge. Yeah. Like, it's a canyon with water. Like, that's how it you know, developed. So thanks for the geology lesson. Yes, you're welcome. I think the Gorge Amphitheater came about in either ninety six or ninety seven, I wanna say. I saw yeah, I was 90- back. Fish played there in ninety seven and ninety eight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I came back to Baltimore in ninety four and I have not been across the Mississippi since then. How about right. the Mason and Dixon? Have you crossed? That I, at I all? have crossed the Mason and Dixon <laughs> line into Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay, amazing. I certainly have. New York is one of my. I used to fly out of BWI to I Slip, take the subway in, see a show at a bar in New York, hop back on the subway, fly back out the next morning. Back hey, before nine eleven happened. <laughs> uh, where are you located? Uh, Baltimore. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so it was like a hundred bucks for a round trip ticket. It was that much. It was more for the train, or having to drive and be an idiot driving because I knew I was going to go get fucked up seeing a show in New York. You know, <laughs> I could stumble mm-hmm. to the subway. I don't want to have to drive three and a half hours drunk. Yeah, uh, David, I, I realized you 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 were at one of my all time favorite fish shows, which is the, the Moby Dick show from. Deer oh yeah i was at the, the the deer creek show fuck yeah i want that one for an archival release so badly to be fair i was there too hey what's up david that's nice. exciting what's up <laughs> fucking deer yeah, creek. yeah i, oh, I yeah, want them to dude, put I remember an archival you, you gave me a mushroom chocolate that's I right did. i remember you I did. yeah and then i remember you i remember you you punched me in the mouth <laughs> but i probably deserved it because i probably said something <laughs> that totally deserved it <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry about that, you know, but I was... No, don't be sorry. Like I, I said, I deserved it. You bought, I the prob- last, 
you bought the last Sammy Smith oatmeal stout from that guy. And I, that really is, that it. was it. That was it. That was exactly <laughs> it. I was like, you were like five bucks. And I was like six. And I bought that fatty Sammy Smith. And then you punched me right in the mouth. <laughs> but you know what? To your credit, you punched me in the mouth and you let me have the Sammy Smith, which <laughs> was like was very, great. like, that's a yeah. gentleman of you, but you couldn't you drink drink it because your lip was bleeding. Well, that's true. I gave it no, to no. my girlfriend, who I then got pregnant, and I now have an eight-year-old child named Danny. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, none Papa of, Chad. None of that is true. Just, just to be clear, none of that is true. <laughs> Whatever you say, Papa C. Ryan, <laughs> are you looking at my shows on uh, Fish.net? He is. Okay. He's in research mood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you see the smoke coming out of his ears. It's like last four <laughs> brain cells are bumping together there. Fish hey. says that I've been to 115 shows, but it's not true. I've been to 114 shows. It's because one of those shows was I saw them on Letterman in 2015. Uh, that's exciting. But it was, it was, the, it was the night that they, they played the line. Um, oh, I love that song. Yeah. Especially Deep Seconds. <laughs> I uh, I don't have any problems with the line. I am all about the line. It's it's. I used to say it to kids when I taught them basketball. I would reference that guy as it's a, a story song. of. Sometimes you go out there and fail, but you got to go out there and still do it. No, see, it's one of those songs where it's not a bad song, but it doesn't work in the middle of the second set, and that's where Trey keeps putting it, and that's why people hate it. Yeah, and Trey I, is telling you to like it, and you better like it, which I have I no agree. problem with. Hold on. Did they play only the lion or did they play any other songs that Letterman <laughs> said? Oh, uh, it was just the line because I was there for the broadcast or for the, the taping for the show. Right. But that was the same night that, or that was the same day that they did their uh, live on Letterman or it was like, like the, the set. Like, yeah. And what no, I, was I, that? I didn't get into that. It was 2014. I, get into that. I, I, I tried as hard as I could. I, th- I believe it was late June 2014. So, so you're, oh, say, right. you're saying that. I want to say it was the day Fuego came out. Or maybe one at a time. Day. One at a time. Because it was like a couple months before Randall's Island. Right? Yeah. 2014? Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, I almost didn't even get into the taping. Like I was literally, I didn't, I, I didn't have any way of getting in. I was in the standby line and I literally like got up to the rope and they like, they were like, sorry, you know, sold out. Oh man! And I was like, are you kidding? No. And like all these people behind me who didn't know who fish was, I had been telling them why I was there. And they were like, they were like cheering for me. They were like, let him oh, in. Let man. Man. And uh, then like, I don't know, one minute before the taping began, an, an intern comes over and she's like, hey, guess what? One seat opened up and it, I got in and I sat down and the lights went down. So, oh, mm. nice. So, but, but your contention wow. is that that does not count towards your stats. Well, when I entered that as something that I had seen on fish.net uh, and it puts it up as a show but it doesn't count for your stats, no. Oh, okay. Um, I, it, it even, it, it has, it's like, uh, uh, it's a different color. It's gray and stuff. Right, right. Yeah, uh, like they do one of the sound checks, like maybe The Great Went, they have listed as a separate show the day before. And like, yeah. since I was there, I clicked it, but it doesn't count towards the stats. Look at Chad, he's looking at me funny. No, um, I, no, all you got, not just you, no, like, we always kid about the stats and the flexing and stuff like that. And I love it. Like, I love that people know. I just, I have never counted. I tried the fishnet thing once. I like, yeah. I've bragged about this before. I was at uh, SNL and like, do I count that? Like, you were there count that 20? Yes, you count yeah. that. SNM and on SNL? Sure. It wouldn't count yeah. towards your st- your show stats, but yeah, of course count that. Yeah, I count that. Well, my, my, my question, though, is there was somebody last week on Twitter who is uh, his name rhymes with the Nick um, saying that all these Trey shows count as your stats. And I disagree with that. See, I it was not he, he might have been like, sarcastic. He's being Definitely. Sarcastic. He probably didn't have the right font. Yeah. 
I well, was then, thinking about that when it first got announced, and I'm like, well, I mean, if this is the only opportunity that we have to actually see the show, unless you're one of the lucky, I don't know, 30 people that's actually inside of the theater, then uh, shouldn't you be able to count it? And then ultimately, I was like, no, no. But my, but, this is the exact but, but, same thing. This is like going on couch tour. It's like you can't say I've seen the, old tours. <laughs> I've seen old tours. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, point, my point is, is that like, the I've been at so many dicks shows. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, but that's but that's like legit, like what you just said. Like I've been at so many dick shows. Like my point is is that like there are certain shows you've been to that you're like, those were the ones. Like the number, like it's cool to keep track of. Like it's awesome. You got 114 or 115, who cares? I mean, awesome, great. You've been to a shitload of shows. Most of us have been to a shitload of shows. And I, I think at some point that number becomes a handful. Yeah, a handful. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all, all right. But you remember those shows as the ones that were special. Mm-hmm. The only reason I know is because of Fishnet. I bothered to go through over a couple hours and click every show that I knew I'd been at. Oh. And then over time, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, we had, we had to have gone to that because it was in between these two. And I know I didn't go home, Here's- you know, kind of thing. Here's a good question, especially if you've been to 114 shows. How many of those shows have you gone to, like, completely sober? No beer, no any one? One. one. It was my 50th show in Hartford, uh, 2013 fall tour. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I, it was just – I was – the number i think had something to do with it it was like uh, my 50th show i've never seen fish sober you know i've seen right. fish high I on thought- marijuana but you know uh i've never seen fish without any substances whatsoever in my head so i'm gonna do that and it was it was great it was a weird it was a weird night i mean that was the day lou reed died and um oh. i was they do a- that a lot i love lou reed and velvet Did they do a velvet song that night they opened with rock and roll okay uh, what a cool oh. choice, man. What a cool choice. Your 50th show, you're like, no, 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 I'm good. Yeah. yeah. I've never not been show- sober at a fish show. You've always been I've sober? Only, I've only seen seven. Wait, but... Yeah, but you've always been sober? Well, yeah. So I, the, first two, the first two, I was uh, 11 and a half dad. and 13. Okay. So I wasn't indulging yeah. then. And then Damn, it's too bad I was with my bad. whole family. Yeah, we'll, we'll, at my next two and then i just i've, I've never had the opportunity I, I honestly doesn't make a difference to me it's still Wait, my when coach. was your most recent show toronto 2019 and you uh, didn't drink a beer or anything i did not i wasn't 19 at the time so i oh. couldn't buy a beer at the show a good law-abiding uh, i was oh. with my i was with my uh whole family and family friends and um, a couple of uh, very young children who I converted, so it was a good idea. The only to... show I was sober at was because I didn't. Also, have I was a... driving. I was the designated driver. Oh, that's there. yeah, that's a good reason. I didn't have a, a fake ID at the time, and I was under twenty-one. Mm. And so, but... in order to get in, if you want, if you weren't over twenty-one, they axed your hands. I was right. straight edge. Oh yeah, they do that. They uh, my hand. for a fish show. Not yeah. at a fish show, but back they do in that 90. at some venues here. Oh, when they were playing at bars and stuff. Yes, back in yeah. 90. It was uh, it was the Chestnut Cabaret up in Pennsylvania. It was the night after they had played the Bayou. And the Bayou were a lot less lax. Let's put it. They were a lot more lax. Put it that way. If you got in and you washed the X's off, you could still get served, even if they could faintly see the X on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> but up in Pennsylvania, so, they were like, no, no. So how was it, though, differently? Because I've seen both sober and under the influence of stuff. Like, how how is this show different, like, sober, like, the experience? Who, me? No, I was talking to David, oh. The, oh, the, the only one who, the only other one who's seen them both um, ways. Well, uh, you know? I listen to a lot of fish sober, like, just, you know, on headphones right. i go on runs and walks a lot right my right. favorite mu- music to run to is live fish so i'm able to i've you know i've developed a deep appreciation for the music obviously just in general but also sober i don't need to be fucked up at a show to appreciate the music right um 
I think uh, in terms of energy, like I don't think that that was the best fish show. I think every fish show is great. I'm not going to shit on them at all. Um, right. But the, I Which think- one are you that, talking about Hartford 2013? Yeah. Um, I didn't think like objectively that that was the best fish show. There was something, it was just kind of a weird vibe. Right. Um, but I did, I mean, I did enjoy it, but I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't really, I, I don't I mean, really know how to explain the. the I guess the I, I only brought it up because Chad and I were talking about it the other night because we had both seen shows, drunk or sober, and when you're sober, it's almost like you, it's almost like you have ADD and you're just bouncing around from like thing to thing, because like you notice new stuff quicker, mm-hmm. whereas if you're drunk, you're kind of just like stuck looking at Fishman playing for like a good half a jam before you're like, oh, other people are on the stage. That's right. Well, not, not, even, that? not even drunk, but tripping or high or whatever. Right. Like, yeah. We were like, you're bringing this into the light. And we'll, we'll go there. Um, like the last four or five fish shows I've seen, I've seen completely sober as opposed to the first one I saw where I was wrecked. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I was wrecked. <laughs> I would also like to add that there's another very different perspective being an 11 year old at a fish yeah, show. Like an yeah, yeah, no, for sure, man. <laughs> it no, was. Sure. I just talked to my kids. Talk to my kids. Part about of the that. show that stuck out to me it was Blossom 2012, um, and the the during Roses there was just one guy. Um, so at you know how at Blossom like the pavilion's not like raised behind the pit. There's just kind of like a fence. So my dad and I were like dead center, two rows back from the pit. It was awesome. Um, fun fact, if you look up the, if you just look up 62412 on YouTube, um, the guy that filmed the whole show on his camera was like a row behind my dad and I. So we're in like all the videos. Um, <laughs> but cool. um, it's, it, there's just one guy during Roses that was, I just like, I just can vividly picture just him going absolutely nuts and um, another fun story on this topic from that show is uh, during Meat Stick, um, my dad left me at the seat by myself to go help his friend who was having a bad trip find his seat. There's video proof of that, too. My mom uh, was very <laughs> reluctant to let him take me to another show by himself uh, after that. So, so, you're, so your dad is going to join the Fish Degenerate group as opposed <laughs> to the Fish Discord No, group. don't lump him in like that. My dad's the best. <laughs> Oh no, it's a compliment. My little I've brother was taken for years. First show at five. Wow. 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 I took my kids to two I, shows. They were nine and eleven, and then ten and twelve. It was two years in a row yeah. at Merriweather. They saw the uh, Tweezer uh, train show free that they weaved in and out of Tweezer uh, and back on the train and free, and they mm. broke them all up. They were at that show, and the other one they did. You enjoy myself. They were like, is it almost over? I said, one more song. They just started, you enjoy myself. And like halfway through it, they're like, fuck you, dad. Let's go. All right, Kev, <laughs> all right. Kev I have to ask. I've never asked you this before. What was, what was it like navigating your preteen daughters through the lot and into the show at Merriweather? Like, what was that like? I, I walked them through. I got a beer and we went up and I was like, you guys want some jewelry? Look at the jewelry. I bought them each jewelry. I bought them shirts. You know, we went into the show. They're like, can we eat? And I'm like, whatever you want. You know, I made it into a big thing. I probably spent three times the money at that show than I ever do at a show. What was, I, their re- what was their reaction to the scene around them? Because I, I have to imagine as a 10 year old, like, I'm looking at a fish show at Merriweather. It's got to be insane. Well, they, they were dancing around. They kept looking to me for assurance. You know, is this cool? You know, the older one stepped a couple, you know, she went and chased a balloon and I let her have a little space because you want them to feel comfortable growing up. So when they're 18 and going to a show, they aren't some freak in the back, you know, flipping out that there are all these people. They're like, hey, I'm in the middle of this. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> Anti-authoritarian, right pathologically anti-authoritarian, Chad. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, Ryan, uh, yes. Does your mom know Kevin because he, he could be your father? <laughs> Funny. I've never been uh, to Canada. Um, 
no, but I, I want to, from my perspective on the lot scene, um, I, now I don't know whether if there was just not very much of a lot at my first two shows or it was much calmer, but I know I was fine. I, I think there was one at Blossom when I, when at my first show. Um, but um, I'll never forget. So I, I'd, I'd seen two fish shows at this point and in fall 2015, um, my dad like asked me a couple of days before he was like, Hey, like a bunch of my friends and I are renting a party bus and we're going to see dead and co in Buffalo uh, in a few days. Like you want to come? And I was like, okay. Like at this point, I didn't really know much of the dead's music. Um, but I was like, okay, like I'll go see the show. Um, so we left, um, I left school, uh, at lunch, went home, got on a party bus with like 20 of my dad's friends. Uh, we drove to Buffalo. Obviously the bus got thoroughly searched at the border because we <laughs> see a Grateful Dead show. Um, and so we get there, we walk out into the shakedown and it is nothing like I remember from a fish show. I was like oh. clinging to my dad. I was terrified, terrified. It's a different vibe. I mean, it's, the it, whole show was a very different vibe, but yeah. it was fun. But it's also very, very fun. Vibe. I could tell you a lot. What year we, what, <laughs> a Buffalo lot. is a whole different vibe, though, too. Yeah. What year we fairness. went to RFK on a bus? Guy like chartered uh, the whole thing, and. Uh, they passed around a jug of orange juice that had 10 strips floating in it. And yeah. everybody on the bus, but me drank it. When we got there, they all were flipping out and nobody could eat. And they had like shrimp and all this shit. I sat there, ate all the shit at the buffet. <laughs> Go ahead. What was, yeah. what was your story? Huh? Not you. What? I'm sorry. Uh, our, our guest. Me, David. Hello. Yeah. Dan. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, um, I mean, so yeah, I've been into fish for forever and uh, I'm, I'm amongst the uh, maybe minority, definitely minority of people who uh, got into the dead because of fish as opposed to the other way around. Like I was aware of who the Grateful Dead were, but my parents are not deadheads. They didn't listen to the dead at all. I did not get introduced right. to them through that. I got introduced to the dead through the fish scene. Um, and so for the last four years, I've been working at Brooklyn Bowl in Williamsburg. Ooh. I'm a bartender there. Yeah. Um, miss you, Good. Brooklyn Bowl. Miss you all, everybody, the beautiful Brooklyn Bowl family. Um, and anyway, so, I mean, that's a very dead centric venue, obviously, if you know anything about it. Um, and so I've gotten quite close to like, the hardcore deadheads in New York and all over the place. Now I'm definitely a part of that scene. So I can like, I can talk about the differences between the dead scene and the fish scene and how there's like a Venn diagram, but they're very separate from each other and they're very... Um... Well, you're talking about the dead and company scene. Well, he was he was talking about going to see Dead and Company, but I'm just talking about in general. I actually have never seen Dead and Company, so I don't know what it's like specifically. You're not I went that. to like I said, the Dead. I saw huh. the Dead twice in 2004, and I've been to a ton of you know Phil Lesh and friends, and and I saw the other ones. And, Jay Red. Uh, yeah, I mean I've seen Jay Red a million yeah. times. Brooklyn Bull. I'm, I'm so jealous. Them. I want to see them so badly. <laughs> yeah, my so first. What's your take on Jay Red? Huh? What's your take on J-Rad? They're great. They're really, re I mean, I love J-Rad. Uh, I've never seen them live, but listening to them, it, it falls flat for me for some reason. <laughs> I think Whoa! I need to see them Whoa. live. Whoa. Whoa. Are you super into the Grateful Dead? Uh, I started seeing them when I was 15 in 86. How are you? How do you not like listening to J-Rad? It, it's, it, it just... It's like listening to Stevie Ray Vaughan play the blues. There's just something missing there for me. Okay, Oof. I'm gonna I'm gonna link you to something. Okay. It's from oh, man. It, this is a hot take. And I'm also I'm also gonna fucking flame you for hating on Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna let that go, but the guy was no. a soulless hack. That's my whoa. take on him. Take. Whoa, dude! Whoa, That's whoa! 
man. And I will I will connect you with fucking real ass blues musicians that would disagree with you and flame you better than I can for that. <laughs> well, okay. The best thing he ever did was You're his wrong. Solo. The best You're thing so he ever wrong. did. Best thing he ever did was the solo on Let's Dance. You're so wrong. You are so fucking wrong on this. And wait, I will get Buddy Guy to send you an email and tell you how wrong you are. Please tell them, please. Are you talking about the David the David Bowie song Let's Dance? Yes. yes. He plays on that? Yeah, that's his solo. Oh yeah, how about that? Huh. Start there. That was that was the epitome of what he did. He said that that's his career. Hey, hey, hold on. Hey, hey, Lama. I'm sorry. Hold on. Roll the OK Boomer uh, music again. Do you have it queued up? I have a question. I have a trivia question. Oh, boy. All right. Roll it up. You got it? Sweet. It's time for Stomp the Boomer. All right, Kevin, Ryan, here you go. Here's your question. I have my paper. Here we go. What venue was Stevie Stevie Ray Vaughan leaving when his helicopter crashed? Which venue? I don't know that. I don't. That's not fish related. It's not part of the competition. Oh, but I don't, I don't know this either. I've never been a huge Stevie Ray Vaughan fan, but I have respect. What you got? What Ooh. you got, Went? Alpine. Alpine Valley, correct. Hmm. Wow. I remember when he died listening to it on the radio on a Sunday morning, the Lopez show on 98 Rock. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting butterflies about this announcement that's in 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, it's in 10? 12. It's in 10. 12. Yeah. Right up to the 10? Also, quick, I just link, I linked in the chat of the Zoom call a link to my favorite J-Rad jam ever, and you should go listen to it and then tell me if you still don't like them. I, I tell you what I loved, Ryan, was the duo. They used to play at the uh, Funk oh, Box in 8x10 when I worked there, and mm. that fucking fascinated me. That it was just a keyboard and a drummer. Them doing dead tunes, it, it seems like a good way to get a paycheck. Oh, come on. But they're well, not phoning wow. it in at all. Wow. And Brothers Pass, the guy from Brothers Pass plays with them. I Tom love Hamilton. Brothers Pass. Yeah. I thought they were fantastic. And you have Scott yeah. Metzger, who sings better than Bobby has <laughs> sound since <laughs> the 70s. Whoa, whoa. Both of you now. That's a hot one, too. That's not that hot of a take. I'm pretty sure most people think that. Whoa! I mean, arguably, Tom Hamilton sings better than Jerry in the 90s. Whoa! I yeah, but there's, there's, a certain, there's a certain difference between oh, Jerry's post-heroin voice and Bobby just not sounding good. Wow. Uh, I don't know. Wow. I'm, I'm, Bobby, I'm, Bobby's voice just gets too, it's too breathy for me. Can can you just go ahead and say your Twitter handle real quick? <laughs> that will be at. Officially, I'm talking out of my ass, so just. <laughs> he actually put I mean, it in the to chat be fair, when you To be so. fair, I don't really like listening to <laughs> the great, like most Grateful Dead after oh, like 1979. Jesus. Oh, God. The but best Grateful Dead was from February 19th, 1971. To October 1974. That is all the Grateful Dead you need. That was when they had one drummer. We don't also need May one 77. for each year. That's the uh, that's the boomer to... opinion and the millennial opinion. Wait, I'm not I'm a millennial. boomer. And they were the same. Said, and yeah. we're close. We're overlapping. Gen- Generation Z. Yeah, I recently discovered that I'm very. Uh, preferential to one drummer dead. That could also be because I'm currently doing a listening project of Europe 72. But Mickey didn't do much. Mickey had money. No, the problem is there's a very big difference between two drummers and drums and percussion. Okay, right. Because drums and percussion, the drummer is still very much in control and is still free to do mostly whatever they want. But with two drummers, <laughs> there's not. Oh my god! 
is is this your zero pitch? Why Tab can get away with it, but the dead couldn't? Well, yeah, because Ciro's not playing a drum kit. He's not. Uh, he's not keeping the beat. He's adding extra cool stuff. So I think if Mickey was on just straight percussion the whole time, like, sure. Why are we all wearing masks? I happening? put on a mask because I don't want to be contaminated by this poisonous conversation right now. <laughs> And I'm also encouraging people to wear a mask and fucking vote. You have 13 days left. I, I heartily endorse that statement. Yes, yes. Everybody needs to vote. Absolutely. Yes. I got my email uh, Monday that they accepted my vote and counted it, so I'm done. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice, yes. dude. Yes. Nice. If you... If you vote by mail, go to your, your state website. They should have a place to track your ballot. I just so got an email. I, I just got an email today from my Secretary of State saying uh, if I send in my vote by mail, they will track it and here's the website to do it. I think yes. what I'm going to do is I'm going to vote in person, but here's an important thing to remember. If you do vote in person and you live in like California, say, where they sent everybody mail-in ballots, you have to bring your mail-in ballot with you and turn it in. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to sacrifice it, and if you want to vote in person, in, in, in Maryland, in, in Maryland, if you request, you have to do a provisional if you decide to show up. Right, right. If you show up without your post, without your mail-in ballot, if you show up with your mail-in ballot in California, I know at least you can turn it in and vote in person if that's what you want to do. The, the best um, thing, the best thing with Maryland is you request it online, so they have an email attached to it, so they automatically email you. I didn't even have to look. I woke up Monday morning with an email saying, we got your ballot. You're good to go. That's every state's different, but make sure you check your, your What's it like in Iowa? state's webpage. What's it like in, in Iowa? Iowa? You have to request it. So if you're in Iowa and you're one of the three counties that got it pre-filled out and sent to you, that ballot's no good. All right. We got um, 4646 is what I saw today. All right. Um, I'm going to I'm going to head out. I got a right. TV for watching. Um, yes. Thank you very thank much for having me on here. Love having you, Ryan. Pleasure. Yeah. Always, Ryan. always no, fun. Ryan, the trivia. Ryan, if you would have waited like 30 seconds, we would have given you a smooth out. We were we were wrapping it up in case. Oh, we, like we would have yeah. been like, Oops. hey, we want to thank our guests. Like, yeah, that's all right, though. It's I'm okay. Sorry. Thank you, okay. Miss Man. Okay. Thank right. you, Miss Man. Love you guys. <laughs> you on Twitter. Yep. Thanks for coming on. But yeah, we, we are wrapping it up, guys. Thanks everybody for watching. <laughs> and yeah. uh thanks, thanks a lot for having me, guys. It's been yeah, great. Thanks for coming on. I'd and love we'll to definitely reach so out. Yeah, for sure. I hope silver. Yep. Woo. All right. We'll see you all on the Twitch stream. Yeah. Peace out.